For most of us, smoking a little pot and then coming to a sudden, seemingly brilliant realization isn't a newsworthy event. We might tell our friends, we might make a meme about it, uh, but eventually we will sober up and realize that we are dipshits. But for scientists, uh, this sort of sudden realization can take on greater significance, especially if you decide to publish it in a journal. Not like your diary, I mean a real scientific journal. Because many journals will publish things from scientists that are not studies. They could be perspectives or commentaries. Often they can be well-reasoned and thought-provoking, but there doesn't necessarily need to be a single bit of evidence about them. Uh, there's not necessarily any data, there's no experiment, and there's no peer review. But to the average person, you might see this in a journal and you could be forgiven for assuming that it is, in fact, a real experiment with real results. And that is how we came to have media outlets reporting matter-of-factly that PMS is nature's way for women to get rid of their unproductive male partners, with no mention of even the word hypothesis in the following article. Michael Gilling studies molecular evolution at Macquarie University in Sydney, Australia, and he argues in a perspective published this month in Evolutionary Adaptations that because pregnant women don't get PMS and it is evolutionarily advantageous to be pregnant as often as possible, then PMS must be adapted for uh, as a way for women to drive away infertile men by being total bitches to them. Gillings freely admits to Bethany Brookshire at Science News that this is not his field of expertise and he has absolutely no way of testing his hypothesis. He was just thinking about shame huts, how in some cultures women on their periods are forced to go to special huts for the duration of their periods, and how women who have to do this repeatedly would start to get a bit down about it and be angry at their partners for not impregnating them. And the PMS would only make them angrier, ergo science. This is a classic example of a just-so story that Stephen Jay Gould railed about back in 1978 a pot-fueled, seemingly brilliant realization that someone has decided is true because it must be, it fits so well. And as with many of these Just So stories, the person putting it forward, the storyteller, is convinced it must be so because they feel that most traits, if not all traits, must be uh, adapted for, even when we're talking about disorders like severe PMS. Gillian says that he only wants to help reduce the stigma of PMS, which is really a funny way of reducing the stigma of something. Generally, we don't reduce the stigma of a disorder by telling people that the disorder evolved in order to literally drive sexual partners away from the person affected because that person has turned into such a bitch. A better way to reduce stigma may be to use logic and scientific evidence and talk about the fact that Severe PMS is a fairly rare disorder, but one which can severely negatively impact the lives of the women who have it. Women who often aren't taken seriously because PMS is seen as a joke. And we can also point to evidence showing that PMS does not cause women to turn into screaming harpies that drive their sexual partners away. It's these little things that could could really actually help reduce the stigma. So check out uh, Brookshire's great critical article in Science News. And remember, uh, the next time you have a sudden, potentially brilliant thought just occur to you in the shower, maybe while drinking a shower beer, you may have just done science. <laughs>